All right, all right, all right. So, hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome. Here we are once again, ready to get started on a new lesson. It is great to have you guys here once again. Um, It's, well, November the 3rd. Who will have said we have come so far and, well, the year is basically taking, you know, the last steps. Understood, Gabriela. Thank you. So the year is taking basically the last steps towards its end. So, yeah, we are getting close to those times. Um, <clears throat> I hope you guys are doing great. I hope you're ready to get some more learning done this evening. We are going to be working on a few things tonight. And those things have to do with, well, modal verbs as the main thing. You know, we're going to be working on models. And, um, yeah, we also have... My bad. One second, guys. Come on, mate. Okay, so we also have some health issues. One of our classmates, she has stated that she is not feeling her best, which comes very, very nice, you know, for this topic, as we are going to be talking a little bit about that. We're going to be talking about some health problems, health issues, some of the, well, complications you may face when you are not feeling well, the best. Um, now, one thing that I want to do from the beginning is that I want to share you guys an idiom that you can use. If you guys don't know what an idiom is, good evening. Uh, what it means is that an idiom is a phrase that you use to talk about something, but not in a literal way. When you say things literally, like, for example, when you feel sick, you simply go ahead and say that, you know. I'm feeling sick, but when you don't, uh, when you use an idiom, you say things that people are going to understand only if they know the code. It's like if you had uh, a password to the message. So when you say, for example, that you are feeling under um, the weather, that means that you are not feeling um, your best. So feeling under the weather. See, a ver. Frases idiomáticas son eh, muy comunes, o sea, de verdad. Es casi como que cuando decimos verdad, eh, más vale pájaro en mano que cien volando. That's uh, something that we understand because we know the code. We know what the other person means by that phrase. So when you feel under the weather, it's, uh, for example, when you're not feeling the best, when you feel maybe a headache, maybe some um, sore throat, maybe a temperature. So you're feeling a few things here and there. So that's when you're under the weather. Así que, básicamente, utilizar frases idiomáticas va a hacer que ustedes entiendan a qué se refiere la otra persona solamente si ustedes también entienden el código, si conocen el código. Cuando hablo del código, me refiero, verdad, a esa frase específica. Um, like that phrase, we have many others. Uh, for example, one that comes to mind right now is um, if I told you, for example, um, well, one that is very common at night would be, I'm a hit the sack. I'm a hit the sack. Any idea of what that phrase can mean? ¿Alguna idea de qué puede significar eso? Que yo les diga así, I'm a hit the sack. No, esa no, es, no tiene que ver necesariamente con problemas de salud. Esa simplemente es um, una frase, ¿verdad? Que funciona eh, en un contexto específico más que todo en las noches. Sí, I'm a hit the sack. No, no one. Okay. So when you say something like that, when you say I'm a hit the sack is when, for example, um, let's say that uh, here, you know, we are in class right now. And when we get to 9 p.m., when we finish the class, you guys or one of you guys is very tired and says that, you know, you are um, going straight to bed. Like you cannot do anything else. Like you're ready to go straight to bed. So if you say I'm a hit the sack, that's basically what it means. I'm going to hit the sack means I'm going to bed. Sí. O sea, si ustedes dicen eso, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, eh, hace un par de años, hace como dos años, dos años y medio, uh, yo solía jugar bastante, ¿verdad? En las noches. Entonces, eh, cuando ya era hora, que ya yo terminaba, eh, ya, digamos, cuando ya la, terminaba las partidas y todo con mis amigos, yo simplemente les decía, ok, guys, I'm going to hit the sack. Sí, o sea, porque jugaba con más personas, ¿verdad? Que hablaban inglés. Entonces, Ellos entendían el código, ellos sabían qué significaba. Significaba que yo ya estaba cansado y pues básicamente que ya me iba a dormir. Entonces, I'm a hit the sack 
Es una frase idiomática que pueden utilizar ustedes con ese significado. Sí, me voy a dormir. Ok, so, um, like that, we can learn many others. Sí, podemos aprender muchísimas, muchísimas más. But that's going to be for a future time. Right now, I have one question for you guys. And, well, as you guys already know, it's Friday, which means that tomorrow we are not necessarily going to have a class, neither the day after tomorrow. Therefore, we are going to the weekend. Um, okay. Which means uh, we are going to talk about exactly that, the weekend. So, the question for this evening is, do you guys have any plans for this coming weekend? Any ideas on how the weekend is going to go? So that's your question. And let's see. Let's start maybe by hearing from Eric. In your case, Eric, do you happen to have any plans for this coming weekend? That teacher? Um, no. I only stay at home and watch television. That's it. All right. Well, but that sounds, you know, as something nice to do during the weekend. You can like relax at home and, and just, you know, have some um asleep maybe have some rest so pretty cool sounds great yes for example tomorrow in my middle day and maybe take a nap for two or three hours in the afternoon and so at night maybe go to the eat pupusas with my family and or stay at home All that's right. it great yeah that sounds pretty nice very very good okay so uh good How about in the case of, um, let's see, Javier Ramos? In your case, Javier, do you happen to have any plans for this coming weekend? Uh, good evening, teacher. Uh, in, in, the, in the morning, uh, uh, I, uh, I going to uh, the class to the student. Mm -hmm. um in the afternoon um, i i watch tv but oh, no i going to watching tv and um, okay. um, sunday mm -hmm. uh, i watch on tv uh, i watch uh, the clothes <laughs> oh. all right yes pretty yes. cool that sounds great you know that sounds like some nice activities Um, studying and also well getting some relaxing time watching TV that of course sounds great so good very good I hope you have a great weekend how about in the in the case of Connie how about you Connie do you have any um, coming plans this weekend good evening, good evening. Well, but uh, at night I'm going to work tomorrow is my day off Mm -hmm. I'm going to visit my mother with my family. At Sunday, uh, it's only in my house. Okay. Pretty cool. Yeah, it's nice. You know, getting to see the family, of course, is something great uh, that you can do during the weekend. And of course, spending some time with them. So great. Pretty cool. Nice, nice, nice. Thank you. You're very welcome. How about David? In your case, David, do you have any special plans for this weekend? Carlos David. Es que la vez pasada te presentaste como David, así que por eso dije, le voy a decir David. You okay, no problem. Okay. No so... problem. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Um, well, I think I'm gonna go to the park maybe with my girlfriend. And after that, I'm gonna... Well, I'm gonna watch in series maybe in the later. I don't know. Okay, great. Yeah, that sounds nice. You know, spending some time with your loved ones. So yeah, pretty cool. Um, all right. How about in the case of Edwin? Any special plans coming up this weekend, Edwin? Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Well. In the morning, I we to work, but in the afternoon, because I live in Congo, uh, I will go to the Guadalupe Lake with my friend because for me it's very near. Mm -hmm. And maybe in the afternoon, I I would like to visit a a restaurant with my family. 
Great. Very good. Yeah, that sounds fun. You know, you when you live close to places like that, why not? You know, why not take the advantage? It's the yeah. same thing here. Like, for example, in my case, I live, what, like 20 minutes away from the beach. So when I don't find anything else to do, it's like, you know what? I just tell my girlfriend, hey, are you up to, you know, maybe going to see the sunset or something? And uh, that we do because, yeah, it's very close. So, you know, it's, it's why not? Why not take the chances? Um, so yeah, pretty cool. Great. That sounds as an amazing plan for a good weekend. Um, how about in the case of Susana? How about you, Susana? Any coming plans this, for this weekend? Hi, good evening. Good evening. Um, my plans um, the weekend is um, work. I, in the work, um, uh, um organized party mm -hmm. uh, uh, <laughs> um, it's it's new experience um uh i i don't i don't oh, i never uh organized parties uh thematic Temática, ¿cómo se dice? Mm -hmm. um, theme, theme parties. Ok. Um, no sé, solo eso. Ok, no, I mean, that's great. Um, o sea, en mi caso, bueno, voy a contarles un poquito, ¿verdad? Yo no sé, yo la verdad es que a la vida le busco por donde sea. Y hace como un año y algo, o creo que antes de la... No, sí fue después de la pandemia. Creo que fue como un año y algo. Eh... La mamá de un amigo con quien trabajo, ella tiene una boutique, digamos, y ella se dedica también a eso, a las fiestas y así. Entonces, hubo un tiempo en el que anduve trabajando en eso. Trabajaba los fines de semana, eh, o sea, decorando, ¿verdad?, para fiestas. Eh, para mí, por ejemplo, mis trabajos principales o lo que más me gusta hacer a mí actualmente es trabajar en aires acondicionados. Trabajo en eso, trabajo como electricista, cielo falso, pintura, y pues también doy clases. Entonces, eh, pero siento que las nuevas experiencias, como usted dijo, que son nuevas experiencias, son geniales y espero que le vaya súper porque de verdad, eso de organizar fiestas, quizás a veces uno no se queda durante la fiesta, ¿verdad? No ve cómo la gente se la pasa en la fiesta, pero al menos eh, se ve muy bien cuando uno hace bien su trabajo y pues queda, ¿verdad? La fiesta organizada y queda todo bonito porque pues me imagino que la familia sabe, ¿verdad? Como recompensar cuando eh, las cosas quedan bien. Pero, ajá, espero que le vaya súper. Sí, Edwin, perdón, iba a decir algo. Oh, no, ok, sorry. So, yeah, uh, but yeah, I hope, you know, that it goes great, that you have an amazing um, experience with the party that you're going to organize. And if it's a, a theme party, well, I hope you have all the um, the things, you know, the pictures ready. Um, but yeah, well, in my case, my weekend, my plan is that tomorrow I'll work. And uh, after I work, I am planning to go to church with my girlfriend, maybe my sister. I don't know. Um, and uh, afterwards, on Sunday, I think, well, Sunday is going to be one of those days, you know, simply just relax, be home. Um, I'm a huge F1 fan, so maybe watch the race as well. And uh, yeah, that's basically my idea, my plan for, for this weekend. But well, uh, let's get on with it. Let's get to work tonight. And we are going to be talking about this. We're going to be talking about modal verbs. That is the first thing that we're going to be uh, working on. Now, before we get started, do you guys know anything? Sorry, here we go. Do you guys know anything about modal verbs? What are modal verbs or anything? ¿Alguna idea? ¿Qué son los verbos modales para ustedes? Indicativos. Indicativos. Son como auxiliares. Mm -hmm. Muy buena idea. Eric, iba a decir algo. Oh, usted dijo los auxiliares, ¿verdad? Sí, son como auxiliares, ¿no? Ya. Yeah. They're very close to that, very close. Indicativos, sí, también, o sea, son verbos que nos ayudan a identificar, ¿verdad? Acciones específicas, así que sí, yes. So, modal verbs, they are 
a category, a special category amount in the huge amount of verbs that we have in English. Modal verbs have uh, this specific gray area where they land because they are verbs that are used specifically to refer to um, mostly things related to permissions or ability to do something. So those are like the main, main ideas or main moments in which we are going to be um, using the molar verbs. They can be used, of course, to advise as well. They can be used to um, command um, a few things. So they are verbs that have or serve a specific purposes in English. So tonight we are going to be talking mainly about the two model verbs, which are can and should. These are special because, for example, we have like regular questions, right? That we do regular yes, no questions. These ones are with only one auxiliary verb, which is the verb do. So those questions I'll be dubbed as starting with do. Then we also have the questions that start with be. Those are questions that can start with um, is, can start with am or are, or the past forms of uh, the verb be, which, has, which are, sorry, was or were. But then we have modal questions. So modal questions are questions that start with the modal verb itself. Sí, esos verbos son especiales en ese sentido. O sea, son verbos que no necesariamente van a necesitar otro verbo para, hacer, uh, para funcionar completamente. Por lo tanto, no necesariamente son auxiliares eh, en su totalidad. Sí se pueden utilizar como auxiliares en algunos casos, pero algunas personas sí los conocen como auxiliares porque tenemos la idea, ¿verdad?, de que en inglés siempre se utilizan auxiliares para iniciar preguntas principalmente para iniciar preguntas conste. por eso menciono tanto eso de las preguntas porque tenemos el do que es como el auxiliar principal verdad para las preguntas que pues eh, inician así con do luego tenemos el verbo be que también es un auxiliar para eh, preguntas acerca de ser o estar entonces eh, pero estos los verbos modales no necesitan de un auxiliar ellos mismos funcionan como el auxiliar entonces por eso es que algunas eh, personas los conocen como verbos auxiliares, pero no necesariamente. Esos son verbos fuertes, diría yo, que no necesariamente necesitan, ¿verdad? Eh, de, un, de ayuda externa, pues, para funcionar. Ahora, um, tenemos el caso, entonces, de, um, pues, del verbo can, ¿sí? El verbo can puede ser utilizado para hablar acerca de habilidades o también puede ser, por ejemplo, eh, utilizado para hablar acerca de permisos, ¿ok? Entonces, es una cosa extraña, en cierto modo, porque, pues, ya creo que nos vamos familiarizando con eso, ¿verdad? Ustedes supongo que ya tendrán algo de experiencia con eso, que en inglés una palabra puede tener diversos significados. Ahora, cuando hablo de habilidades, ¿a qué me refiero? En oraciones principalmente en oraciones eh, positivas, el verbo can puede ser utilizado como eh, un verbo que expresa habilidad. Like if I said, I can play soccer. That is an ability that I have. That is something that I'm stating that I'm able to do. Okay. Now, I can play soccer. It means that I'm able to do that. If I say it in negative, if I say I can't play soccer, there we have two different meanings that can um, divariate from that um, sentence. So, si yo digo I can't, tenemos dos cosas que podrían ser entendidas. Se podría entender que no puedo en absoluto o que no puedo en este momento. Entonces, por eso mismo, las eh, oraciones negativas con verbos eh, modales deberían ser específicas, tan específicas como se pueda. O sea, debería decir en ese caso, I can't play soccer right now. Sí, I can't play soccer right now. O sea, en ese caso se va a entender, pero no puedo jugar fútbol ahorita. Pero si ustedes dicen I can't play soccer, se puede entender como que yo no puedo jugar fútbol en absoluto. O sea, para nada, ¿verdad? Entonces, eh, eso es algo bien importante que tomar en cuenta cuando hablamos de verbos modales. Ahora, cuando eh, me refería al permiso, ¿sí? cuando ustedes hablan o les, les digo que se puede utilizar para permiso, sería... Como en el caso eh, que alguien pregunte, 
can I what um can I play with you sí digamos que alguien les pregunta eso verdad can I play with you les están pidiendo permiso para para eh, hacer algo now there is something important as well when it comes to that with the verb can I do not recommend you guys to use can with permission because can because it has the other you know a strong form which is ability can as a permission verb doesn't suit uh the whole the whole permission thing because if you say can i play with you it basically can be also understood as if you were stating an ability that you have something you are able to do entonces no es necesariamente lo más aconsejable que utilicen can como pregunta o sea, es mejor utilizar can simplemente como oración o como negación. Pero como pregunta para pedir permiso de algo sería como un tanto complejo porque hay algunas personas, más que todo hoy en día, o sea, que ya se conocen un poquito más los verbos modales, que las personas están empezando como a responder de forma negativa a preguntas con can. ¿Por qué? Se entiende como que ustedes están diciendo, yo tengo la habilidad de hacer esto. O sea, si ustedes dicen, can I play with you? Es casi como que están diciendo, ¿verdad? Que yo puedo jugar contigo, por decir así. Algo así se, se está empezando a utilizar. No es que ya eh, se le quitó el, el poder que tenía Ken para permission, pero es mejor utilizar, por ejemplo, may, en el caso que ustedes um, le quieran utilizar así. Ahora, casos donde podemos utilizar Ken sin ningún problema. Eh, para pedir permiso o autorización para hacer algo, sería con amigos o personas con quienes tenemos bastante confianza. Pero si ustedes están pidiendo permiso a su jefe, a sus padres, o a alguien que tenga autoridad sobre ustedes, ¿verdad?, en un lugar específico, es mejor que utilicen may. Sí, en caso, claro, ¿verdad?, que la pregunta sea en inglés, sería mucho mejor utilizar may. Um, like, if, for example, you want to do something, like you want to go to a party, if you tell your parents, Can I go to that party? Um, if Of course, it's, it's not the case with you because I know most of you guys are adults. But um, if a kid, for example, asks you, can I go to a party? That does not fit into the permission area. So it's not necessarily only permission. It's permission with an idea of self um, self-authorization, kind of. So yeah, it will be much, much better If you simply say, may I go to the party? Because in that way, you are asking for authorization. You are requesting that authorization. But still, as I said, this is a term of preference in some extent because, yeah, well, many people still use can, you know, as, as, a, as a permission verb, but it's not the most common thing that is happening right now in the English language. But well, so the examples that we have here, what can I do if I have the hiccups? Ahora, yo quiero saber también, esta es una pregunta bien importante. Sí. Do you guys know what are the hiccups? ¿Saben qué son los hiccups? Hippo. Mm -hmm. Very good. So, I want to know what are your options. You can think about it. Think about what are the options that you guys would give, you know, for someone to cure the hiccups. So, what can I do if I had the hiccups? En este caso, Ken está siendo utilizado como la como la función principal que tiene en la actualidad en el verbo, en el, en el, perdón, en el idioma inglés, que sería de posibilidad, o sea, ¿qué puedo hacer? ¿Sí? ¿Qué puedo hacer si tengo hipo? Por eso les digo, no necesariamente el can sigue siendo tan de permisión o de permiso como era antes. O sea, antes eh, a los maestros o los maestros enseñaban, ¿verdad? Can I go to the bathroom? Si sé que más de alguno recuerda que le enseñaron eso en las clases de inglés. El can I go to the bathroom? Pero ya con el tiempo se ha venido dando de que, o sea, eso se, se toma más como un tipo, no necesito que me autorices, casi que te estoy diciendo que voy a ir al baño, ¿sí? Entonces, por eso es mejor el may, I go to the bathroom, ahí sí estoy pidiendo una autorización, ahí sí estoy pidiendo permiso. Entonces, uh, pero bueno, aquí, Ken, what can I do if I have the hiccups? ¿Qué puedo hacer si tengo hipo? So, the possible answers here are, you can drink lots of water, you can take some sugar. Now, in your case, what are some of the, um, the ways in which to cure the hiccups? What do you guys do when you have the hiccups? I want to hear you. Um, let's see. In the case of maybe Connie, what do you do when you have the hiccups? Um, I recommend the, the drink 
love Agora. Okay, good. Nice. Um, how about Eric? In your case, Eric, what would you do if you have a detective? Bring water too. Okay. Um, how about Edwin? What recommendation do you have for someone who has the hiccups? So, uh, in my case, uh, I drink a lot of water, but in my family, uh, the uh, we have like a, I don't know how to say, uh, like tradition. Mm -hmm. When when someone have uh, the high cup, uh, uh, drink water, but not the uh, normally formed, you know, like opposite. Hmm. How so? Como al revés, tomar agua al revés. I don't understand like that. Pero como? <laughs> O sea, el vaso se pone en la forma opuesta. Entonces uno tiene que inclinarse para tomar agua. Ah. So you don't do this. Mm. No. So you, you do that. Or how? No. Tampoco. Like this. You see? Oh. Oh, okay. 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 That's, that's weird. But cool. Okay. Thank you for showing us. Yeah, that sounds, you know, sounds like a, like a trick in life. Very good. All right. Great. Thank you very much. Mm. Ya, ya, ya estoy entendiendo más. O sea, ahorita estoy pensando lo hiciste, estoy entendiendo más. Like, ¿Cómo sería? Okay, that's, that's weird. But... Interesting. Uh-huh. Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of weird, but nice. Okay, cool. Um, How about David? In your case, David, what do you recommend or what can I do if I have the hiccups? Maybe they scare you. Yeah, example, right. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something with my sister, with my older sister. It used to work, you know, back in the day. Um, it used to work when she aquí acaba de mojar toda la mesa. Ahorita que quise intentar eso que dijo Edwin, por eso estoy secando. Bueno, um, so back in the day, it used to work, you know, scaring her used to work, but now it just doesn't. And she gets some hiccup attacks that are very, very bad. Um, but yeah, that's why I'm trying to find an answer. Oh, yes. Thank you. Um, Jay-Z, what would you do? Uh, hold the breath. Uh -oh. I don't know. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Hold your breath. For how long? For how long? Three minutes. Three minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So hold your breath. I'm going to leave it at hold your breath as long as you can because three minutes is a lot. But yeah, hold your breath. So yeah, cool. Hold your breath as long as you can. Um, How about in the case of um, Javier? Any suggestion, Javier? So what can I do if I have the hiccups? Okay, maybe Javier left. Um, how about Lucia? What do you think, Lucia? What should I do if I have the hiccups? Hi, teacher. Hello. In my case, I drink a lot of water or hold your breath for oh. five minutes. Okay, good. Very good. Bueno, en ese grupo, ya veo que no hay nadie que tenga este, no sé, trucos de curandero, trucos extraños, o no sé si nos los han querido sacar. Porque hace, uh, no sé cuánto, pero hace un buen rato, tuve un grupo donde, pues, trabajé este mismo tema, ¿verdad? Entonces, y les pregunté lo mismo. O sea, what can I do if I have the hiccups? Y empezaron a hablarme de un montón de cosas, de que el ajo por aquí, el ajo por allá. Y, o sea, les juro que la mayoría de remedios que me daban eran con ajo. Y yo me quedé como, ¿Mm? o sea, no sé. Era como que, por ejemplo, machacar un ajo, echarlo en el agua y tomarse el agua. Y yo, ¿ah? Is that, like, is, is that really going to work? Otro era, no sé si ponerse un ajo aquí, como en la comisura que uno tiene acá, en, como en, en la parte acá del pecho, y, y aguantar la respiración. Y yo, ¿qué? Se los juro, que en serio, esa vez me quedé sorprendidísimo con todo el montón de cosas, y dije, ¿qué clase de inglés o curandero que tengo acá? Porque sí, that was kind of weird, because they had a lot of tricks, you know, to like, um, like cure the hiccups. Now, this one, the take us some sugar, I have never tried it, and I don't know if it's um 
if it's gonna work or if it, if it will work you know taking some sugar but maybe maybe i will give it a try with my sister because as i said she has uh hiccups very very often and uh, they are very hard attacks but okay let's see the next one so that's Ken. Si ese sería entonces el caso de Ken. Como les digo, Ken se utiliza con posibilidades. O sea, ¿qué puedo hacer? Ahora, en el caso de should, es diferente. Should is used when you're talking about advice. Advice, en este caso, se entiende como eh, consejo. So, what should I see there? Sí, what should I see there? Esto significa qué debería. Sí, qué debería ver ahí. So, what should I see there? That means... That it's something, you know, that um, I am telling you to do. I am advising you to do. I am basically guiding you to do. So what should I see there? And then we have two different answers, which are positive and negative. And the first one is, you should visit the National Museum. That's the first one. You should visit the National Museum. See, that's, you know, an advice that I have for you. That's something that... um. You should do. Now, I want you guys to think. I will ask you the next question to all of you. What should I do if I go to your town? Sí, ¿qué debería hacer yo si voy a su ciudad, a su pueblo? Piensen ustedes dónde me mandarían. So, yeah. What should I do if I go to your town? But then, let's see the next answer. And it's, you shouldn't miss the nightlife in Mexico City. Ahora, aquí tenemos una cosa un tanto contraproducente, por decirlo así. Porque este contexto es negativo, o sea, dice you shouldn't, pero al final de cuentas la oración final o la oración completa es positiva, porque dice you shouldn't miss the nightlife in the city, o sea que estoy, estoy aconsejando que no se pierda algo que yo considero que es bueno acerca de ese lugar. O sea, si ustedes recuerdan en la conversación, ¿verdad? Que eso era lo que se presentaba, eh, le decía a la persona, o sea, los lugares a donde podía ir o lo que debería visitar en México. Entonces acá, eso es como la culminación. You shouldn't miss night, the nightlife in the city. Si no deberías perderte la vida nocturna en la ciudad. So, even though the um, grammatical part here is negative, the thing you will understand at the end has to be or should have like a positive, um, a positive meaning after all. So now, what should I see? If I go to your town. Esa es la pregunta para ustedes. ¿Qué debería ver? What should, where should I go? What should I visit? If I go to your town. Let's start maybe with um, Eric. In your case, Eric. If I ever go to your town. Where should I go? Or what, what should I do there? Well, if you visit here to Chalchuapa, you visit the some marines and also go to take to eat yuca. I don't know how they say yuca with chicharrón. Okay, yuca with maybe, chicharrón. Maybe or maybe go to the visit the park. Okay, thank you. That's a good recommendation. Um, how about in the case of um Susana? If I ever go to your town, Susana, what should I do there? Mm, I I shouldn't miss um the coconut in, in the city. Okay, I shouldn't miss the coconut in the city. Great, very good. That's a good advice. I will consider it. Um, how about in the case of uh, Mm, Jay-Z, if I ever go to your town, what should I do there? Go to the mall. Okay. Uh, go, go to shopping to the mall. Okay. Uh, or uh, visit a restaurant with the excellent view to the like uh, Ilopango. Okay, good. Very good. Thank you very much. Or Ilopango Lake. Ilopango Lake. Ilopango Lake. Uh -huh. Lake. Yeah. Sería así. Sería mejor uh, Ilopango Lake. All right. That's what I should do if I go to your town. Um. Okay. No, it's okay, Connie. No problem. 
Muy bien, entiendo entonces. Um, how about Lucia? In your case, Lucia, what should I do if I ever go to your town? Hello, hello, Ana Lucia. Teacher, you should visit the Nahuistalco city because there is a variety of traditional food and the climate is pleasant. Mm -hmm. All right, very good. Yes, I, I would love to go back to Nahuistalco. I forgot that you were from there. But yeah, I have been there and I enjoyed uh, La Yuca con Chicharron that I tried one time. You know, every time I have been there, I always bring some home because it is delicious. So yes, um, thank you very much for for your advice, and I will hope I hope hope sorry that I can do that you know um, soon once again. All right, how about David? In your case, David, if I ever go to your town, what should I do there? Well, uh, my town is very it's a little city, it's a little town, but maybe I should um, go to the park in San Salvador. And uh, if you like the highlights, uh, you should uh, go to Zona Rosa, maybe. And you should go to the new Millennium Plaza. It's very good for here. Okay. Thank you very much. That's a good advice. All right. How about in the case of Edwin? What should I do, Edwin, if I ever go to your town? Hello, uh, I have two ideas. For mm -hmm. example, if you come to Santa Ana, first you should visit Cuarepecle uh, because mm -hmm. there are many restaurants around. You can rent a jet ski and other things. But at the night, you should visit Cathedral in Santa Ana. Uh, that's beautiful. Okay. I have done both things. Ya hice las dos cosas. So yeah, that's a good recommendation. Really? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. What is your um, opinion? Well, something sad is that the cathedral was not lit when I went. I went there. I stayed in Santa Ana in January. I think it was like January 4th or uh, 5th. Yeah, so the, the cathedral wasn't lit. Um, But, you know, it, it's great. Like the city, I didn't expect it to be so alive because... Um, we arrived there around 9 p.m. We planned to stay in Guatemala, but we were not convinced by any of the, you know, the hostels in um, in Esquipulas. So we decided to come back to El Salvador um, because we needed to go to Atiquizaya the next day. So, um, yeah, we stayed there in Santa Ana and uh, we arrived there, as I said, like around 8.30, maybe 9 p.m. So we were sad because we thought we were not going to get any food because we were starving, all of us. Um, but yeah, when we went out, well, it was kind of lonely because the roads, you know, where we stayed were, were kind of lonely. But we found so many places, so much people at the park or so many people at the park and so many things to see and do. And uh, yeah, I think we went to bed at around 11 and the city was still alive. So that was something that really surprised me. I had never been to Santa Ana like at night. I love Santa Ana. It's probably my favorite city in El Salvador. Um, and yeah, it kind of, it, it really surprised me to see how great it was at night. So yeah. in Cuatepeque, yes. well, of course, basically everyone has visited Cuatepeque at least, at least once in their life. So yeah. In Santa Ana, uh, the park is full a uh, whole night. Yeah, the whole night. Because as I said, you know, we went to 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 the hotel like around eleven, and it was still like there was still people. There were still like dancing and then music and las tortas porque that's like the most famous thing, right? Yes. Uh huh. So yeah, it was it was very good. Um, and I don't know, maybe this year we're gonna do it again because we like to go to visit some family in Guatemala for the end of the year. So maybe you know this time we can repeat it. Um, cause yeah, it was, it was a great, great experience. So yeah. Okay. So thank you very much. Uh, how about Angel in your case, Angel, what should I do if I ever go to your, um, to your town? Uh, well, teacher, good evening. 
Good evening. Uh, in my case, in Chalatenango, uh, you should visit uh, El Pital mm -hmm. because it's a uh, uh, really amazing uh, mm -hmm. and cold. Okay, yeah. Um, I did. Y, bueno, ahora creo que les puedo contar. Visitar el Pital era mi sueño desde que yo tenía como 14 años. O sea, yo soñaba con ir, ¿verdad? Mi familia organizó una vez un viaje, supuestamente, cuando yo tenía como 16, 17. Se canceló a última hora porque no pudo un primo. Entonces, y, ajá, ¿verdad? El papá de él, como el que iba a pagar el micro en el que íbamos a ir, se canceló, nos fuimos. Luego en la U, yo quise convencer a todos mis compañeros de ir cuando estábamos en una clase de turismo. Los demás nos animaron porque era muy frío. Entonces, y se me, como tres, cuatro veces se canceló. Luego, cuando ya yo estaba a punto de terminar la carrera, fue que pues me mandaron para Estados Unidos y allá viví en Minnesota. O sea, y pues <coughs> hace un frío del demonio. Ahorita voy a ver, creo que está, ya está a menos, porque sí que ya, sé que ya está en temperaturas negativas o, o bajo cero, pero quiero asegurarme ver de cuánto es ahorita. Menos dos, pero no está tan helado, se supone que más tarde se va a poner hasta menos seis grados. Entonces, o sea, pues iba. Había días ya en febrero o en enero que yo amanecía a menos 20 grados. Entonces, y era como que, ajá, o sea, súper frío, no voy a decir que no. Pero, no sé, mi cuerpo se medio acostumbró a eso y, o sea, no lo sentí tan, tan complejo, digamos. Pero, oh, thank you, Eric, thank you. Sí, eso quiero ver, I swear. Pero bueno, um, el punto es que cuando regresé, sí, organicé un grupo ¿verdad? de amigos y les dije, vamos al hospital, que yo quiero vivir la experiencia. Pero pues fue un poco triste porque, um, o sea, yo, yo quería vivir el frío, según yo, en el hospital. Pero cuando fui, o sea, yo andaba en short, andaba en una camiseta, porque pues ya había vivido el frío, frío, frío extremo en Estados Unidos. Así que ya no me sorprendió, o sea, y fue como que, no sé, les juro que yo quería de verdad sentir, o sea, frío, frío, según yo, porque pues yo, yo sé que es básicamente el lugar más frío del, del país, entonces quería sentir real frío, pero pues no fue así, so yeah, kind of sad, but yeah, I have been to El Pital, it was great, I mean, I'm not saying it wasn't great, it was great, I love the place, I would love to go again, actually, I want to go there with my best friend, but um, yeah, you know, it was simply kind of disappointing because Uh, because of my previous experience, but it's pretty cool. Yeah, El Pital will be a nice place to go again. So thank you, thank you guys very much for your recommendation. Ahora bien, vamos a ver. So here we have how to structure these sentences. When we use modal verbs, we of course have to follow on a specific pattern. Now, the reason why is because uh, modal verbs, como alguien mencionó anteriormente, son casi, casi como auxiliares, porque ellos básicamente lo que hacen es aconsejarnos o guiarnos a hacer algo más. Entonces, por ejemplo, acá, si dice, ¿verdad? Should try, significa, o sea, que estoy como orientando a alguien a que intente algo, ¿sí? Entonces, por eso mismo, el modal verb se va a colocar antes que el verbo principal. Pero vamos a empezar en orden. So, the question structure. The question structure for a modal verb, if it's, of course, an open question, porque si es una yes, no question, pues simplemente empezamos así, ¿verdad? Um, como digamos, should we go to, aquí sería, should we go to Santa Ana, ¿sí? Si fuese una yes, no question, de esta forma se podría construir. Should we go to Santa Ana? Deberíamos ir a Santa Ana, y ahí pero simplemente se le contesta sí o no, ¿verdad? Yes or no. That's a yes, no question. Very easy. But if it's an open question like this, It's where should we go in Santa Ana, ¿sí? Where should we go in Santa Ana? Entonces, acá tenemos double H word, which is this. In this case, it would be where. Then the modal verb, which is this. Then the subject, which is this one over here. Then the main verb, which is go. And then the complement. So, if I simply say, where should we go? Just like this. Where should we go? That works as a question, sí, eso funciona como una, como una pregunta, si yo simplemente digo, where should we, simplemente digo, where should we go, pero si yo digo, verdad, con el complemento, where should we go, in Santa Ana, this goes farther and beyond, 
and this represents um a full question like in a more um specified question because here i want to know your advice on places i should visit in santa ana so yeah this is then the structure for a question se los explico así porque quiero que ustedes me den ejemplos eh, de regreso okay para que vayan pensando ya en los ejemplos que vamos a crear then we have the positive structure with this one we simply have a subject a modal verb a verb and a complement so that's how it works um okay so uh it will be then subject is we the modal verb is should the main verb is try and the complement uh is hiking in this case now this structure needs a complement in este caso no necesariamente podríamos verdad deshacernos deshacernos del complemento aquí sí lo vamos a necesitar porque necesitamos saber eh, por decirlo así um, qué es la actividad que esta persona está está ofreciendo sí we should try hiking ahora déjenme decirles que en esta oración tenemos tres verbos sí tres verbos seguidos el should que es un verbo modal que pues como les digo solamente se funciona como para orientar verdad la actividad try que es el verbo eh, principal que, que significa intentar sí y hiking que en este caso significa escalar sí entonces we should try hiking pero este el verbo eh, conjugado en en presente o en presente participativo se puede utilizar como un eh, gerundio lo que significa que en este caso no está siendo utilizado como verbo sino como nombre sí el decir hiking acá se refiere más bien a la actividad, ¿verdad? Al escalar. O sea, pero escalar en sentido, no de la acción, sino del nombre, ¿sí? De la, pues, actividad como tal que se realiza. Entonces, we should try hiking. Um, pero bueno, esa es la estructura que debería seguir. ¿sí? Subject, modal verb, verb and complement. We should try hiking. Now, we can make it more specific. Yes, we can say, for example, we should try hiking. Um, what? Uh, Isalco. Let's say we should try hiking Isalco. Sí, deberíamos intentar escalar Isalco. Sí. So yeah, we should try hiking uh, Isalco volcano. If you want to be way more specific, you can say it like that as well. So you could say something like this, but I prefer it just like this. We should try hiking Isalco. Now, in the negative form, in negative we are going to follow just a tiny difference, which is going to be including, well, the negative part. In this case, uh, we're going to leave it complete uh, with the word not, okay? So it means um, the verb is, sorry, the subject is we, the modal verb is should as well, then we add not, then the verb, the main verb, which is eat, then the complement would be chicharrones every day. Now, we can go two ways about it. Podemos ir de la forma completa o también contractada, ¿sí? Aquí tenemos las dos posibles opciones. Podemos hacerlo completo o contractado. Entonces, podríamos decir, we should not eat chicharrones every day. O si no, podemos decir, we shouldn't eat chicharrones every day. Sí. We should not um, eat chicharrones every day. O we shouldn't eat chicharrones every day. Sí. Esas, entonces, son, digamos, las opciones o las formas en las cuales podemos eh, utilizar los modal verbs. Ahora sí, quiero ver en su caso eh, escribir, ¿verdad? Um, un ejemplo por cada uno, sí. One of questions, one of uh, positive structure and one of negative structure because I want to see, well, how well, um, you know, how well we're doing this. So yeah. Um, Anyone who has an example right away of a question? ¿Alguno de ustedes tiene algún ejemplo ya listo para una pregunta? O sea, ¿cómo podría ser una pregunta que ustedes hagan con un uh, verbo, verbo modal? Cualquiera de los dos pueden utilizar. Puede ser can or should. Where show it's It's called the, no, uh, ¿sí? 
it uh it's a it's uh, making me confused. Mm -hmm. Well, sure, it uh, it is go I salco. No, where well, sure, uh, go at the salco. Uh, pita, pita, uh, food, food, food. Okay, podía ser. Where should we go to eat pupusas in Isalco? Sí. We go. Uh, Ajá. Thank El we es que nos faltaba. Problem. Sí. Where should we go to eat pupusas in Isalco? Okay. Good. Yeah, that sounds nice. Um, Eric, how about you, Eric? What is your example? Well, maybe. Where shall they go the next week? Okay, where should they go next week? Where should they go next week? Yeah, that's a nice that's a nice question you can ask. Uh all right. Um uh I have question. a example. Uh-huh. I don't know it's correct, but maybe who should start in the class? Who should start in the class? Who should start the English class. Oh, who should study English class? Okay, yeah, that sounds like a nice example as well. Who should study uh, English class? And there, of course, the, the answer can be anyone who feels the desire to, or maybe people who are, uh, you know, being left behind, depending on the context. Porque eso es una cosa importante también, que las preguntas por lo general también van a depender del contexto en el que se usen. Pero bueno, aquí tengo en el chat, uh, what, should you uh, what should you take a cold? Podría ser, Javier, what should you take with a cold? ¿Sí? ¿Qué deberías tomar como cuando tienes una, una gripa? ¿Sí? What should you take with a cold? Or when you have a cold, si lo queremos hacer completo. Pero eh, what should you take a cold, pueda que nos falte ahí un poquito ¿verdad? para poder completar esa, esa oración. Ok, um, Okay, great. How about in the case of um you're welcome, Javier. How about Susana? Any example you can provide us of a question with a molar verb? Mm, where should we um visit um Rina del Stasumal? Okay, when should we visit Rines Rines del Tasumal? Sería con when, no, sí. No, sería uh, ah sí when when sí, when porque, should we ajá porque con where visit, sería extraño sí sí ajá, sí, sí. sí sería con uh, when sí when por, vaya por ejemplo podemos utilizar why también en algo así why should we visit Rines del Tasumal? Pero si digo where se complica un poco porque eh, si digo where es como que Estoy diciendo dónde debería visitar las reuniones de Somal y pues ahí, ¿verdad? La respuesta, pues podemos irnos por el lado obvio. You could say El Salvador or you could say El Tazumal. But yeah, that's complicated with where. Pero con when es un poco más abierta porque ahí sería más refiriéndose al tiempo, ¿verdad? Como la temporada en la cual debería visitar. So yes, when is a way better option. O why, en el caso de utilizar why, sería pues para buscar motivos, para buscar el por qué. Debería visitar el lugar. So, yeah. Okay. How about uh, a positive structure sentence? Sí, simplemente una oración utilizando eh, un verbo modal. Oh, Eric. Okay. You should go to the doctor because you are sick. Okay. You should go to the doctor because you're sick. Good. That's a good example. Um, okay. How about Ángel? Do you have any example for this, Angel? Okay, teacher. Uh, I I should go to visit Estados Unidos or United States. Okay, I should go visit the U.S. Es como decir yo debería ir a Estados Unidos. Hmm? Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Sounds like you know an advice to yourself. So yeah, it works. Okay. Okay, how about David? Any examples you may have with a positive stricter sentence, David? Mm, 
Maybe okay. just right now I shall eat. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that sounds nice. I should eat. Good. Um. Yeah, very good. Nice example. How about uh, Jay-Z? Jay-Z Acosta. Any example you have with positive structure uh, or with a positive sentence? You should try um, swimming. Oh, good. You should try swimming. At Cotepeque like. Okay. Yeah, sounds great. You should try swimming at Cotepeque. All right. Not too bad. Not bad at all. Um, how about Lucia? Uh, I should not a lot of drink soda. Okay. I should not drink a lot of soda. Okay, yeah, no debería tomar tanta soda, ¿verdad? Uh, or you should not drink a lot of soda. Cualquiera de las dos formas puede funcionar. Um, uh -huh. Okay, um, how about in the case of uh, Edwin? Do you have any example with a positive structure, Edwin? Yes, um... I should practice English every single day if I, if I want to improve. All right. Um, that's a great, great, uh, you know, idea or great advice to yourself. Great. How about Susana? Uh, you should not uh, uh, drinks uh, at at um, I don't say I drinks in the morning. Okay, you should you should not drink in the morning. Now, when you say drink in this case, I understand drink alcohol. I, I think that's what you're referring to. So yeah, that's a good advice. You should not drink in the morning. Um, how about, okay, so here we have one from Javier and it's you should eat a fruit every day. That sounds like a great advice. Very good, you should eat a fruit every day. Great, ahora. ¿Qué pasa con shouldn't? Las cosas que no deberíamos hacer. ¿Cuáles pueden ser algunos consejos que ustedes pueden dar que alguien no debería hacer? Vamos a empezar en este caso eh, quizá escuchando a... Um, let me see... Lucía. Some advice that someone should not do. Something someone shouldn't do. Teacher, sería el caso de la oración que dije de I, I shouldn't a lot of drink soda. Ajá, uh -huh, I shouldn't drink, ajá, uh -huh, I shouldn't drink a lot of soda. Sí, sorry. You shouldn't drink a lot of soda or I shouldn't drink a lot of soda. Very nice. Uh, how about Jay-Z? You should not um, go to the... They uh, will go to, oh uh, no, you shouldn't not swim if you don't swim. You don't have I don't know. If you don't have experience, maybe. <laughs> uh -huh. You should not swim or you shouldn't, you shouldn't uh, try to swim if you don't have experience podría ser algo así verdad como si no tienes experiencia yes. es mejor no intentarlo ya yeah. okay yes. good thank you you're welcome you're very welcome a ver Ángel your example okay teacher uh, we shouldn't uh, drink beers mm -hmm. okay we shouldn't drink beer um, how about Connie what is your example uh, we shouldn't Dancing for Sunday. Okay. Great. Very good. Not too bad. Um, how about uh oh okay. here we have one from Javier. Javier dice you shouldn't exercise without warming up. Ese es un muy buen buen ejemplo y un muy buen consejo también. You shouldn't um exercise without warming up. Okay, and the last one, Edwin. 
Um, you shouldn't work a lot on weekend. Okay, very good. That's a good, a good advice as well, you know, to stay healthy in your mind. All right. So um, for this week, basically, guys, this is it. You know, we have uh, basically closed the first week. So all that I have to do left for now is simply thank you. Um, thank you for your attention and participation. And I hope I'll see you guys uh, next week, you know, to continue learning and to continue improving our English. So thank you guys very much and bye-bye for now. Have a great weekend and see you next Monday. Bye, teacher. Bye. 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 Bye.